Okay, I think we're ready now. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Victoria, welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming the mid-year freakout book tag, I think. I've filmed a lot of tags in the last few months ever since starting booktube because I think it's a great way to show your preferences and share what you like. But I felt like maybe people are getting tired. But I asked you guys on Instagram if you wanted to see that and a lot of you said yes, so I'm doing this. The mid-year freakout book tag is a tag created that you should do after half of the year is done. And I know it's July, I know, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to film it and I asked you guys and I wanted to wait a little bit, but now I'm filming it and it's, it's, it's here. And before I answer the questions, I'm going to give you an update on my current reading. Okay, let's get to it. My year in books of 2021 so far, I've read 61 books, which I think are definitely more books than I've read in my entire life. And so far, I've read 18,567 books pages. Gotta say, I've listened to a lot of audiobooks as well, so I have not read 18,000 pages, I think. I'm not gonna tell you everything, like the shortest book and the longest book I've read, because that's a thing for the end of this year, so make sure to subscribe, I'm really excited for the end of this year. Now it's time for the questions, which I really liked, and I have them on my iPad. Let's go. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2021, and I chose two, and if you have been around here, on this channel for a while. It's to no surprise to you that I chose The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I read The Song of Achilles in March and The Picture of Dorian Gray in April and I absolutely love these books. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the books because I've talked about them millions of times and if you want to get a summary it's better to Google because I'm not that good at summarizing books but they were amazing and I know the song of Achilles is talked about so much and there are some people who do not like the book but I absolutely love it and the picture of Dorian Gray just enchanted me with Oscar Wilde's writing and the story of it B being a classic from that time I just think it stands out against a lot of all the other classics that have been written and that I still need to read Okay, next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. I cheated a bit because I don't think I've read that many sequels. I actually just have one, which is not really a sequel. You get it in a second. It's my reread of Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I'm currently listening to the books again and it's not really the sequel because it is a trilogy, so it's the first part of the trilogy, but it is essentially a sequel to the Shadowhunter universe or to the Mortal Instruments. I could almost say Lord of Shadows because that really is the sequel of Lady Midnight. So, both of these books. Woohoo! A new release you haven't read yet but want to. I also chose to. The first one is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. It's a retelling of Peter Pan and Wendy's story and her brothers vanish and she tries to find them and it was released in January. I bought it I think two months ago and I still haven't read it yet but I believe it still counts to new releases so I'm excited to read this. And the next one is One Last Up by Casey McQuiston or Casey McKiston, I don't really know. I always say McKiston. Sorry if that's wrong. <laughs> Obviously everyone's really excited about this book because I think it's this, I don't know if it's the second novel of Casey McQuiston but a lot of people have read Red, White and Royal Blue and those people, including me, are really excited to read One Last Stop by her. Yeah, I'm quite excited for that. I have seen mixed reviews though. The most anticipated release for the second half of the year, I only have one answer to that, which is Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Elia Zenz. I am so sorry if I'm saying this wrong, but I am so excited for this book to come out. I read the first part in January and I loved it, but the only reason why I didn't give it five stars was because there was something missing. I felt like the ending was too, not too quick, but it was just over so fast. So I desperately wanted a second part and I read that there wasn't really gonna be a second part, but then a few weeks later, the author, So Benjamin, announced it and I was so excited. I am so excited when this book comes out and I will definitely read the first one before I read the second one just to have the entirety of the story. Biggest disappointment. I wrote down a couple of books. So the first one, and I gotta say I'm so sorry, is Clara and the Sun by Kazuro Ishiguro. I know a lot of people who love this book so much but I sadly really didn't and because I heard so many great things about it, I thought I was gonna love it. I was not interested in the story at all and I'm so sorry but but I was really not fond of this book and I really didn't like it. The next one is also deeply loved by a lot of people, which is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I read this in March 
and my favorite booktuber, Noel Gallagher, said that it was one of her highlights in 2021. And obviously our tastes are different, but I thought that was the beginning of me starting to get into booktube, so I wanted this book for my birthday and I got it. I thought it sounded interesting, a distraught woman grieving her her mother's death and coming out of a complicated relationship and aspiring to be an author and working a shitty job. It sounded very realistic and I loved the themes of struggling and dreaming and the obstacles of life basically. But sadly I just didn't find it interesting at all. I thought it was pretty boring. I, I thought there were some great things in it but so disappointed by this book because I really did not like it. I do think that I want to not read it again but listen to it again and maybe give it a second shot because I read this in one day in a time where I was not feeling very well and not really loving what I was doing so maybe I'll give it a second try and maybe this answer will change but so far that's what I have to say. Next question. Biggest surprise. This is really hard because I haven't read a book yet that like blew my mind, which I didn't expect. I expected to be blown away by The Song of Achilles. And I, I think I was blown away by the picture of Dorian Gray, but I wanted to give you a second answer or a different answer because I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This was a total surprise to me because I thought it was gonna be way more difficult. It was the first really old classic that I've read in English. I never read anything by Jane Austen before. I thought a novel would be quite difficult for me to understand, but it was actually really great. I really enjoyed it. There were some passages that were really, really slow and really, really boring, but I love Jane Austen's writing and I can't wait to read another book by her because I badly want to read Emma. It was so funny. And that was, I think, the reason why I really liked this book in the end because it was hilarious at times. And I did not expect that to be the case because I thought I would not understand these jokes, but I did. And that was, I think, the biggest surprise that I was able to understand not only the words, but also the humor and the imagery and metaphorical comic relief that was built into it. So yeah, that was, I think, the biggest surprise. Yay! Your favorite new author, whether it's a debut or new to you, and I chose new to me because a lot of authors are very new to me, and I gotta say, Oscar Wilde. He is a very very popular, known and famous author and writer. I read two books by him and I can't wait to read more and I just absolutely loved it. I think after reading Cersei, Madeline Miller might be up there as well, but I absolutely love Oscar Wilde. It's amazing. So yeah, I'm choosing him. Your newest fictional crush. I don't have anyone. Currently, I really don't. I have a lot of characters that I, I dearly love, but when they already have a partner or like it's a love story, then I usually just love them together and I don't think like I wanna, uh, this is my crush, I'm just like I love this person, I love character that was created, so I don't really have a newest fictional crush. Newest favorite character. This is a little bit different because I've known this character for years and I really like this character for years but just now while re-listening to a certain book that I'm gonna tell you about in a second, I I just really love this character. And it's Mark Blackthorn of the Dark Artifices, Dark Artifices books. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. So Mark Blackthorn is, I think, the oldest of the Blackthorn children. And if you don't know the books, then I think it's probably really hard for you to understand. But I, I love him. He's such a sweetheart. And he doesn't really know a lot of things because he's been in difficult situations. I don't want to spoil anything for the people that still want to read these books. But yeah, I, I absolutely love him. I, in general, love all the characters of the Dark Artifices. But I love Mark. Mark is great. He's such a sweetheart. <laughs> a book that made you cry. <laughs> the book that made me ugly cry at the beginning of the year was Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Till that point, haven't read or haven't completed reading the entire books, which I know for some Harry Potter fans, it's um, very surprising. For me, for example, it doesn't really matter if you read all the books, if you watched all the movies, if, you, if you've done both, both, if you've done both. I just think if you're a fan of Harry Potter, then you're a fan of Harry Potter. Except if you still think that Hufflepuff is a stupid house and that Slytherin is the evil guy's house and that everyone who is cool belongs in Gryffindor. I mean, obviously it's still a fan, I'm just kidding. But like, come on, it's not like that. The diehard fans, and I would call myself a diehard Harry Potter fan, they know that all the houses are equal. I have to defend my house, guys. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that made me ugly cry. I was so distraught even though I knew what was going to happen. I was straight up crying throughout the last 120 pages. I was dying. 
inside. It hurt. It hurt really, really bad. And the next book I could cry to was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Read the book for yourself. I recently saw a TikTok of a person who said that they didn't feel anything while reading The Song of Achilles. And I was like, I don't want to judge, but like, are you okay? Are you okay? Because I wasn't after reading this, or how are you okay? Because I wasn't after reading this book. Even though, again, I knew what was going to happen and it broke my heart and ripped out my soul and thrown into the Tartarus. Yeah, it broke me and it, it hurt and it, it still hurts. And I still want to reread this book and relive this pain all over again. I don't know what's wrong with me, but that was, that was a hard thing. The next question is better, which is a book that made you happy. And there are a lot of books that made me happy, but I think the book that really stands out for me is Loveless by Alice Oseman. Loveless is about Georgia, a girl who has never had a crush, who's never kissed anyone, and then she's going to college or to uni, and she wants to experience all this. She wants to experience falling in love, but she then finds it very difficult and then she learns new terms that maybe could help her understand her situation, understand herself a little bit better, which are aromantic and asexual. And this book just made me feel so validated and so listened to and heard and represented because there isn't a lot of popular literature or media that you could consume that has any kind of representation of aromantic or asexual people or both. It's like with every sexuality, with every race, with everything that is a minority that is represented in something that, that you really love, I feel like it gives you a really good feeling of I'm not alone. So reading this book and reading about George's experiences that I myself have experienced was just so, so lovely and was so great and just another reason why I could feel better about myself. Having a character there that is like almost exactly like you um, in that department is just, just great and it made me really happy. So I'm gonna choose that. That was a long ass answer. <laughs> the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? I have a lot. I'm gonna choose three. I have to get the third one though. The first one I'm going to show you is one of my newest editions, The Iliad by Homer and it's the cloth bound penguin classic edition and I do want to collect those. I think they're very beautiful and I want to collect all of them, and this is the first one I have. Just to make it more clear, I really love how this book looks. I think it's really, really pretty, and it was a gift by my family, and I love that they have a bookmark. Okay, next one is The House Without Windows by Barbara Newhall Follett and Jackie Morris. I think this is an absolute gem. It's so beautiful with the gold foiling again. I'm a sucker for that. But what I really loved was when I opened this book and I looked at this. I'm gonna put away the cover. I absolutely adore the illustrations. And look at this. It has a butterfly and gold foiling and the writing. Do not, do not focus on me. It's also in gold foiling and I think this is so so beautiful. The last one is a book that I recently bought and you've seen it if you watched my my vlog when I went to the city because I did some book shopping. A lot of book shopping. There were a lot of new books. <laughs> a lot of money. And I did a book haul so if you want to see that if you haven't yet then definitely watch it. It's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson. Hodgson. I hate it how I can say it. Burnett and I think again Gold foiling. And it's also a penguin cloth bound, but these are a little bit more special, I think. Like, as you can see, these are different. And they do have the secret garden in this edition as well. Look the inside. Ah, so pretty. So yeah, these are the most beautiful books I currently have, I think. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? The first one is Any Way the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. I know there's some controversy around her, but I've read the first two books and I I simply cannot stop there. I need to finish the trilogy. I actually do have it. It's right here and I can guarantee you that I will read it by the end of the year because I already started. <laughs> 
So yeah, this one, because it was one of the most anticipated books I've waited for this year. One Last Stop, as I said, by Casey McQuiston. All of the so far published Shadowhunter Chronicle books. I want to finish The Dark Artifices. I really want to listen to The Infernal Devices. I have the first two parts of the Magnus Bane trilogy. I think I'm gonna listen to the most of them because they are very, very thick and it's a lot of fun to just listen to these books because they are very, very long. And then the first two books of The Last Hours. So excited to read these. The covers are beautiful and I do want to read all of them. And the last one is Cersei by Madeline Miller. I haven't read it yet, even though I've had it for quite some time now, but I really, really want to read it. These are the books I need to read at the end of the year. Actually, I want to read all of the books I currently have by the end of the year. The last question is favorite book to movie adaption you've seen this year. I could not choose a new one because I have watched Emma and I loved it, but sadly I cannot say anything to that because I haven't read the book yet, even though I wanted to read the book first. Oops. But I'm again picking Pride and Prejudice by A.J. Austin because I love watching the characters that were just in my head and that I've read about now come to life and have voices and have a, fa a face that I can really look at. And even though some things were a little bit different or some of the characters were a little bit um, not miscasted, but I just felt like the connection between Darcy and Lizzie was a little bit different in the books, but that's my own opinion. But, but that doesn't mean that I did not like the movie. I really liked it and that's why I'm choosing that because my favorite part was Mr. Collins. I thought it was hilarious and I love Tom Hollander and I thought he was amazing. So these were all the questions. This was the mid-year freak out book tag and I can't wait for the end of this year to then make a huge ass video of all the books that I've read this year. I hope you're excited for that. If you are, then please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscription button to never miss an upload because I upload twice a week on Thursday and Sundays and I always tell you when I can't make it or I update you guys on everything on my Instagram. If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up and please comment down below what you would like to see next or what you've read so far and maybe answer the questions down below. I, I will write all the questions in my bio and then you can copy them and maybe answer them yourself. I would love to read about your answers and about the books you've read so far. Like and comment as much as you can. That really helps me and uh, helps the YouTube algorithm and says, hey, these people really like this video. So if you can, then please do. I guess this is it. It's raining outside and I need to go outside with the dogs, which is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hopefully see you in my next video. Bye! I have a headache. Ouch. The most beautiful, the most beautiful, the most beautiful. And as we said, there wasn't a lot. Oh, there's dog hair all over my mic a little bit oops and as we said there weren't a lot of things that could have gone wrong but at least that would have been what the f am i saying <laughs> them once but zeus i'm filming could you like i haven't said anything please don't please don't uh, kill me <laughs> okay the most beautiful book you've bought so far why am i reading this so weird <laughs> what guess you say <laughs> There's a dog here on my nose. I got it. <laughs> okay, and then we just have And then we just have all the other things that <laughs> Okay, I think we got it <gasps>